welcome to my channel where we talk about historic knitting and recreate that knitting and the yarn that goes with it. Today I'm going to work on making a reproduction of the Monmouth cap. It's a style of cap that was widely used and wildly popular in the 16th century um, with caps being mass produced out of Monmouth Wales. The caps are mentioned all over in primary sources, both Shakespeare, writings, illustrations, people mention them in letters, um, they're on the inventories for Jamestown, and the descriptions talk about it being basically like a modern watch cap or stocking cap with the double brim, a little button on top, and then a loop in the back. However, there's only one surviving copy, or example of one, and that is in the Monmouth Museum, but there's not a picture of it in the museum's online collections, unfortunately. But I will link the pictures I did find down below, so you can take a look. Um, but that, those pictures are what I am basing my recreation on, and then a couple of written descriptions, published scholarly works. This is the museum's picture of the cap. So, Christy Buckland describes it as being having a double-knit edge down on the bottom, with that kind of decorative edge being a cast-off edge and the loop on the back being 17 stitches. However, Richard Rutt says that the hat is knit from the bottom up. So what I think is going on is that it was knit from the bottom up using some kind of provisional cast-on. And then whoever knit this cap came back and picked up stitches along the inside and then knit down to knit that brim and that that bottom edge looks a lot like a three needle bind off to me. And then of course there's the button on the top and Richard Rudd also describes how many rows the brim is. I think it was eight, I'd have to double check. And then he also goes through and describes where all of the decreases are knitting the crown of the hat. So I'm gonna use those descriptions for knitting it and then I'm gonna make a quick swatch to see if I can make the brim look like this picture if I knit it from the bottom up with a provisional cast on and then pick up stitches and do a three needle bind off. Double knit brim, bind off edge, knit from the bottom up, used a provisional cast on, and then I went back and I picked up stitches along the back, knit down and did a 3 needle bind off on the bottom, and then just kind of chained with my knitting needle instead of a crochet hook, and I think 
that looks pretty good. It meets all the requirements in the descriptions and looks pretty darn close to the pictures that I could find. So I think we're going to go with that for the knitting part, which means I just need to go and figure out what kind of yarn I need and the yarn weight, thickness, and what needle size I need. So we'll do that next. Okay, so both Richard Rett and Christy Buckland say that the hat is at a gauge of about two stitches an inch, which is huge. Um, swatch I did, it's about a medium weight yarn on size sevens, and I bought five stitches an inch on that. This guy's an old project that I have that I did in worsted weight on size tens, and that one I get about three and a half, four stitches an inch, so I'm hoping, thinking, guessing that I probably need a bulky weight yarn and size 15 needles, which I hope work because that is the largest I have. If that doesn't work, I'm probably going to have to go to the hardware store and get some dowels and make something bigger than that. And then I need to figure out what kind of sheep fleece I need to spin that yarn. And Christy Buckland suggests that the Monmouth cap was made with Ryland sheep fleece because it's naturally brown which is the color of the hat but also it's the heritage breed from that area where the caps were made and it was very popular at the time and local so that you know seems reasonable to me also she's a shepherdess in that part of Wales and probably knows the fleece of the area I can't get my hands on Ryland fleece. I've looked and looked and looked and I have to import it from England. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fleece source book and I'm going to try to match as best I can the staple length and microns of some of the fleeces that I have and see which one's closest to Ryland and then take a look at the characteristics of the fleece just in case something's really off because you know, Ryland is known for not felting, so I probably don't want to pick a fleece that's really, really good for felting, um, just because they won't behave the same. But I'm mostly interested in matching microns and staple length because those have the biggest impact on behavior of the yarn. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be back. Okay, so I can figure out how I'm going to put a little table with my sheep breeds that I have, their microns and their staple lengths compared to Ryland up here. If I can figure out how, hopefully. Um, looks like my Cheviot and my Clun Forest are the two best matches that I have, with Clun Forest being a little bit better, but I think I'm going to use my Cheviot because this is what I've got for my Clun Forest. It's washed locks. I only have four ounces, and I'm going to lose some of that in the carding and preparing the wool of that, or the fleece, to be spun. And I'm a little worried that I'm going to need to adjust my yarn weight and thickness after I spin, which would mean redoing it, and I don't have enough of that fleece to make mistakes, basically. My Cheviot that I have. I have a whole pound of that. I can make mistakes. I can redo it if I have to. So I think because it's cl close, staple length is a little bit longer on average, but I think it'll be okay. And I have enough that I can make mistakes and see what I need to do because I have never knit something that is two stitches an inch. I have never dealt with yarn that thick. I don't know what it's supposed to look like. Um, and then no idea. So, we're going to figure that out. To give myself an eyeball idea, I'm going to try... This is the yarn that I did the swatch with on my 7s, with the 5.5 stitches an inch. I'm going to try holding it double on my size 15 needles, and see if that gives me about the right gauge. And then I have at least like a visual of what the yarn I'm trying to make is supposed to look like. Hopefully that works. We'll see. I think it will. It'll be okay. It'll work. Okay, so just quick, with a way too small swatch on my 15s, I get about two and a half inches, or stitches an inch, which is, I'm going to say close enough, because I don't want to go to the hardware store. And that's with 
My swatch yarn held double, which is a little bit, I think, too thin still. So I'm going to need to, like, make each ply of my yarn a little thicker than that and then put them together and hope it puffs up, too. Because 100% wool yarn tends to do that a little bit, which, you know, helps. I'm going to make my yarn do fine, like usual. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna get started on spinning. Let's go. wobbling with my wheel for a couple hours and it isn't going well. I am having trouble drafting my fiber thick enough for the yarn that I need while also getting the tension right on my wheel so that it'll pull up onto the bobbin. So while getting frustrated for that, this happened. So I think I need to take a break and walk away for a while before I do something stupid and think about what I want to do and how I want to fix this problem. So I think I'm going to end this video here and then we'll see what I come up with in the next video. So if you want to see how I fix my yarn issue, uh, subscribe, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching! <laughs>